for definite means in summary number four. Uh, <clears throat> so, kung ganito yung, yung, yung definition of bicarbonates, in other words, matagal pa na natin itong ginagawa. Kasi traditional museum work, in a sense, is done by carbonates because we are using the specimens that have been collected many, many years ago, but before we only get to read about it. Na kahit siguro yung mga nangyayon natin ay hindi, hindi nila nakaputot ang nila. In other words, by carbonates means hashtag I feel you. <laughs> Ano ba yung naramdaman mo? Naramdaman mo. So, parang ganun yung idea. <clears throat> so, here in, pinupropose ko yung itong definition of Vicarious Collection. Uh, to be specific, this is Vicarious Collection of Insects from Herbarium Specimens. <clears throat> now, as, an, as an insect sampling method, Herbarium Specimens are examined for the specific purpose of searching for insects. Ang interest mo din sa herbarium specimen ay hindi yung plant, but yung insect na naman ito. <clears throat> and most of the time, you, you're going to be dealing with herbivores. Otherwise, kung hindi siya herbivore, uh, most likely incidental lang yung presence ng insect na sa herbarium specimen. Uh, at itong mga insects na ito, inadvertently or unavoidable. Kaya makikita natin bakit ano? Collected along with the plant specimens. And I have to emphasize this. Um, this is actually not a novel idea. Uh, apparently, um, this has been done um, in the Philippines, according to Mr. June. He's done it in the past. Um, although, hindi talaga nagamit yung term of white car use collection. If you actually do a quick Google search, using the term white carbs collection from quotation marks. Maka kapag collection of four articles and none of them deals with kung ano nang ipin po sa Now, um, definitely this has been performed in a variety of ways, pero using on the different terms. Now, if you do a quick um, Google Explorer search using her body specimens in quotation marks mm -hmm. plus insects. There are uh, about a hundred articles that will come up, and the articles that have been cited by, by a few more uh, studies. Back. So it's hashtag most their review in spirit. <laughs> so kung ano man yung nakolekta ni Dr. Rabol noon, tapos ngayon yung examine ng specimens niya. Parang ganun na rin yun. Parang ganun ka na rin. Parang kasama mo na siya na nagkulit. Kasi totoo. Okay. 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 Pero nung exam, yun ang portion ng DNA samples or tissues for DNA extraction. Mula dun sa specimens na nakulit ka ng Alfred Russell. So, nagkaroon daw siya ng boost from sex. So, parang ganun ka rin yung idea ng Barbaris Valley. Uh, so, explore naman natin, um, quick lang, paano naging useful yung Barcarius production of insects from herbarium specimens. And let's start with the most obvious, which is the discovery of new taxa. So, I came to know about Barcarius production because of uh, Louis Russell. Um, <coughs> Parang naging, ano siya, naging technician siya naging. Isang kokoyologist. Isang kokoyologist. Ano ba? Isang hindi ba kayo sa hindi? Ayun, yeah. Parang siya po yung nag-slide mo ni Ferris. So, nagkaroon din siya ng ganong idea. Sabi niya, ay, may kailangan ko identify. Pero, punta pa ba ako ng Africa? Para, break me. Kasi ayun naman, baka meron dyan. So, ganun na yung nangyari. Ang sabi niya, bakit kaya hindi masyadong identify or hindi masyadong diverse yung 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 white flies within your tropics back then. Um, at saka bakit ngayon lang na, na describe ito mga ito? Sabi niya, it's probably because uh, itong mga species na ito ay unlike yung, yung kanilang katapayo or kanilang kapamilya uh, or kaklik. Uh, sila ay less, uh, less conspicuous 
their cryptic, they produce less amounts of blinds. So, uh, definitely, mas may hirap sila mga hula. So, by Vercari's collection, nakita nila itong mga specimens na ito, and it proved to be new to science. So, this is just one of the obvious uh, benefits na makukuha natin from this in the report. Now, this was also used para, para, I think sila John's sa Hawaii, uh, nakapag provides an evidence for an undescribed but already extinct species ng Philodoria. A Philodoria is a uh, scatophagy. It's scatophagy day. Ito yung scatophagy day, apparently, ay, ay species specific or host specific. Meron silang host specificity. Ngayon, tinignan nila itong, itong herbarium specimens. Asteraceae, it's an aster. Uh, tinignan nila, may nakita sila. So if you can see this, and then there are mines then. <coughs> Ito kasi yung, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually Graciliari in Ebay. So, uh, it's, it's a leaf miner. It's, it's a leaf miner. So, nak nakita nila, apparently for Graciliari specified species, yung patterns pala ng mines can also be used, or are also a diagnostic character for the group. Ngayon, ito, Ito ang napaka-interesting yung story nito kasi itong Philodoria um, specimens ng, Philodor ng, ng, ng species ng Philodoria uh, they are most specific this this plant, this aster was found in the island of Lanai one of, this, one of the major islands in Hawaii but itong Lanai kasi is masyado na siyang degraded so itong aster na to apparently is believed to be already extinct in the island of Hawaii. Ngayon, merong, merong isa pang species ng Philodoria na nakikita dun sa Lanai. However, it mines on a different plant, on a Myrtaceae na, na species. Uh, they think na hindi ito yung first because of the pattern of the leaf mines. Second is because of host specificity. It's very unlikely that the uh, extant species of Philodoria salamana is the same as this one because of those reasons. So having said that, uh, dahil dahil wala na yung wala na yung dahil wala na yung yung population yung yung plants sa island, dahil host species sila. Apparently, the Philodoria species na to sa Hawaii ay uh, island endemics. Therefore, with the extirpation of this aster, <coughs> naging extinct is it to species. So unfortunately, hindi pa siya hindi is. So ito some benefits that, that we can uh, get from doing by artists uh, collection. Apparently, we can also identify ano ba yung na-force natin in the extinction. <laughs> So, parang gano'n. So, more or less, we can get an idea of the diversity of herbivores plus ano yung, ano yung naging extinct because of our actions. Uh, this is also another example of uh, an extinction, uh, an evidence of uh, an insect species that has been that has gone extinct now. This so this, this is <laughs> specimens were collected back in 1914 in Mangareva, uh, Yaga, and it's in French Polynesia. So if you can notice, there are mines on okay, It's also a leaf mine. So they are looking at this pattern of leaf mines compare them with the existing ngayon, uh, sila. And then they conducted uh, a more recent survey around the neighboring islands, but they could no longer uh, detect the similar patterns in leaf mining. So uh, they say this is also another proof of uh, extinction that has been caused by Anthropogenic disturbance. Yun, uh, uh, 
apparently it's it's there. We just only have to look deeper. We just have to look more closely sa ating, sa ating uh, herbarium specimens because they are there. So makikita niyo dito, there mga paper pieces. This is an orchid. Um, tapos ito ay ni Rear Nilal from their recent collection. This is Paralleloma vitato. It's a scatopagidae. It's a leaf mining fly. And the discovery to is a little bit serendipitous. Eh. Nakakatuwa yung story nito. Kasi nung nag-deposit na sila, so dinideposit na nila, nakita nila dun sa collection na isa dun sa mga deposit ay apparently rear from from Neotia for that. From, from uh, a species of orchid. So, nagulat sila kasi itong Neotia for that. So, nagulat sila kasi hindi pa yung nare-record doon eh. So, ang ginawa nila, nag-examine sila nung, nung herbarium specimen. And then apparently, uh, meron pa pala, meron sila nakita mga pupil cases and species na doon ng paralloma. So, by Mercari's collection from, from herbarium specimens, they were able to establish the fact na indeed, host plant pala nitong leaf mining fly na to, yung Cordata. Plus, nakapagdagdag pa sila doon sa uh, host plants, iba pang host plants, nung insecto. So, Yeah, it, uh, it can manage some of the paper. So, tracking origins of in invasive herbivores. This was done by David Lees. Um, ito kasi, ito horse, uh, horse chestnut leaf manual is apparently uh, a notorious insect pest in Europe. Tapos, this was described only in 1989. So, hindi nila, hindi nila ma... <clears throat> controversial yung... yung taxonomic history ng species na ito, na ito, tsaka yung invasive history din niya. So, ang ginawa nila, nagkuha nag sila, nag nagtingin sila ng herborn specimens, tapos nakakita sila ng mga mines, and look at this one. Uh, this was pressed in some herborn specimens. So, ang doon pa rin yung isang ito, nakakatawa kasi this was collected uh, in 1928. So this was collected in 1928. And from this, nakakuha pa sila ng archival DNA. So, ginamit nila yung results, apparently, as early as 1879, and then na pala yung species na yun. Um, this is Camerania or So, sinetback niya yung history ng species sa Europe by more than a hundred years. So, in the description of 1890, uh, but apparently it has been in existence since 1879. That was from the DNA that they were able to, to extract from these, from these, the mga, mga na press along with the herbarium specimens. They were able to identify haplotypes that can be correlated with the uh, local outbreaks before. Um, na-establish nila na itong mga haplotypes ng mga, ng mga local outbreaks na coincide doon sa uh, construction ng road networks in sa area. So this is proof na human disturbance can actually aid in in the proliferation of invasive species. So from by using herbarium specimens, uh, establish nila yung history ng organism plus uh, history. Tapos, isa pa ito sa favorite ko kasi ito is uh, a scale insect din yung ginagawa. Ano oh, sir? Itong, itong si Youngstead et al. They ask the question, ano ba ang magiging biological response to elevated temperatures. And this is very important kasi 
uh, in light of global warming. <clears throat> ang paano kaya maapekto ng global warming? Actually, related global warming yung ating biological species. So as a model system, tiningnan niya as a proxy for for global warming yung cities because of the urban uh, island heat effect. Uh, sa cities, mas mataas ang, ang temperatures than the global average. So, ang sabi niya, this is a proxy of, of things to come. Uh, para malaman naman yung response, they need historical data. Kasi back then, uh, back then ang problema doon is wala namang actively nagkukuha ng data, no? uh, especially on scale and abundance. So what they did was, they surveyed for, they surveyed for scale insects. Pakikita niya dito sa insect. Nag-retain pa rin ang evidence ng scale insects. Itong insert, the species ng insert. So using historical data, as far as the trend is concerned, mahirap i-establish yun kung wala kang historical data. So they overcame this limitation by looking at herbarium specimens or uh, to be specific by looking at the scale and sake of goodness on her barn specimens. And I get excited by, by this because we don't have scale and sake of this is a melanas piece that we cost that. Plus, this is also something we can use diba? para para matingnan natin yung, yung naging trends ng ating mga, mga current uh, insect pests. Uh, I think this may also be applicable to to the populace of the aspect of this business. Na, na mention ko yung mga ilang instances na naging, kung saan naging useful yung vicarious collection of things. With the exception of those occurring in population outbreak levels, scale insects are in general very difficult to find. They are cryptic in nature. For example, this medieval species uh, when I was in Cibano, Aksidente ko lang ito na Twitter. Nagsaset ako ng pinball trap, tapos nahawi ko siya, tapos tumambat siya sa mukha ko. <laughs> so, para makita mo ang scale insects, you have to actually look for them. At isa pa, na complication sa paghahanap ng scale insects, specifically armor scale insects, is kung saan sila ang marahan. Uh, for example, this one, Kung nakikita niyo yun, kung putin niyo yun, that's the scale cover. Tapos makikita mo lamang siya if you actually open yung leaf sheet. Otherwise, hindi mo siya makikita. Same with this one. Kailangan mo muna tanggalin yung leaf sheet ng bamboo para naman detect mo yung presence ng armor scale. So, <coughs> Since hindi siya formally ginagawa dito sa atin, uh, naiintindihan ko, naiintindihan ko po yung, yung reservations ng ating mga botanists about you know, examining our precious herbarium specimens. Uh, in the process kasi, hindi po natin may iwasan yung, yung destruction. Um, I mean, hindi naman siya destruction talaga. Yung may konti tayo mapakompromise. Sinabi mo na. May konti compromise kasi if we go back to this, <laughs> if we go back to these pictures, <laughs> makikita niyo po, kailangan ko pa tanggalin yung, kailangan ko pa tanggalin yung leaf sheet para na makita siya, para lang ma-detect siya. So, <laughs> pero minimal lang naman. <laughs> anyway, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> so, kailangan pala. Uh, before we formally do this, and again, I understand your reservation, and nagpupunta rin po ako sa field, our specimens are precious. No? Hanggat maaari hindi natin sila papahawak sa iba, kasi baka, alam mo <laughs> Baka masira lang sa kanilang uh, sa kanilang paghawa. So, <laughs> so here in, mapupukos ako ng isang you know, protocol that we can discuss later kung paano pa natin i-improve. First is of course, photo documentation. Uh, so sana meron tayong, meron tayong series of photographs na 
before we conduct the, the Bicarious collection and after we conduct the Bicarious collection. Plus also, we can get some ecological data from photographs then, eh? like kung saan sila nakuha, yung feeling sa ikan, yung mga ganun dalay. That was, we could also use that to more or less estimate um, insect abundance if they are like scale insects na sessil and toxic uh, species. That was it all. I think, I think one of the important things that we have to talk about is the selection of herbarium specimens. <coughs> Definitely, hanggat maaari, hindi natin gagawin yung holotypes natin or yung type series natin. So, sa isang collection method naman, lagi naman kung marami tayong nakukuha, especially if it's a general biodiversity survey. So, uh, I also understand that sometimes hindi po natin napaprocess agad. So, maybe we can start with those na hindi pa na naman mount, para hindi siya masyadong controversial. At saka, siguro do, doon sa mga kailangan i-remount, which is similar to what Sir June did. Yes, well, that, that's what I did. Uh, I, because understandably, okay. botanic curators consider herbarium specimens like sacred relics, you know, relics of saints. You can you can view them but not touch them and that. <laughs> Which is understandable. Yes, yes. So when you mention holotype, and I think really holotypes are no touch, no touch. Holotype. Hashtag. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Tapos yung brethren, hindi dapat meron label, no? Label na nagsasabi na by Cars Collection was done on the specimen. Kasi baka may matanggal na deep sheet, baka may photo na something. Uh, at least we know na meron ginawa ito sa specimen. Tapos mga tools, no? Uh, Precision surgical tools. <laughs> so we're going to be needing micro pins, uh, surgical blades, that was feathery forceps, the, the, the brush can be used to allow to pin down the specimens while you're retrieving the insect, and also uh, from picking the insect. Tapos yung processing of specimen, uh, meron mga bagong na development protocols kaya, for example, si Dr. Bader, for the simultaneous DNA extraction and slight mounting of, of uh, millibugs, pero pwede natin siyang i-apply <coughs> naman sa other scaling groups. Uh, Nakausap ko rin si Dr. Ian Fontanilla kasi as much as possible, kasi since ganito din naman yung ina-advocate ko, as much as possible sana, ma-maximize natin yung information na makukuha natin sa specimens natin. So if we have the opportunity, at willing naman tumulong si Sir Ian, uh, we'll try to extract DNA from our specimens. So imagine nyo, meron tayong herbarium specimens, meron pa tayong insecto, tapos meron pa tayong DNA. So how do I do it pala in general? So this is from Piper. I push an ID because So first, and dito siya, ang una kong ginagawa is I dab it with alcohol. Uh, nalaman ko na if you dab it with alcohol, medyo na natatanggal yung attachment yung scale from the leaf. And then using a micro spatula, dito, uh, you can try to scrape it. Naman, kita niya dito sa port, uh, stage, port stand. And then, ayan na siya, yung tinurn ko yung scale cover, pag hindi yung set ko sa loob, yung adult tinurn sa loob. Kikita niyo ba? And then, I have to pick it up using a brush. Tapos dalagay sa survival. So, However, uh, this is actually one of the easiest things to do. Kung naalala, naalala niyo uli yung dining chroma, yung, yung armor skin sa dining chroma. Sometimes hindi ko talaga natin may iwasan na mag-sacrifice ng siguro yung leaf sheet. Or sometimes 
except uh, especially for for hormone skills na LMD medyo pag script mo yun may tendency na magpupal kasi brita na sila so to overcome that what I usually do is I, I cut the leaf na malaki lang ang kaunti dun sa skin para lang ma para lang ma-retain para lang hindi mag-mitilate yung stress would Vicarious collection be worth it? so I, I hope na Yes, it's worth it. <laughs> Together, let's do this. <laughs> so I would like to acknowledge these uh, people, uh, most especially of course, Sir June. And to my master, Ariel, thank you in advance. <laughs> if you'd like to read about the, the mga nasa ikaw, So, thank you. Okay.